Good morning. Good morning. This is awesome. It's Friday. Got my neuro coffee in hand as usual. So um, I was reviewing anatomy this morning. Had just having a blast. How about that for geeking out? And uh, I it, it made me remember that I had a couple of questions that I had to answer from Q and A. Oh, and that is perfect neuro coffee. Um, so I want to address those questions. I'm going to try to do it in one fell swoop without actually asking the question. I'm just going to go through some hip mechanic stuff that I think can get confusing as to how some of these presentations arise. And generally the questions were, um, how do I end up with these situations where I have this excessive or it appears to be enough external rotation, but I lose internal rotation in the hip. And then how do I then lose the external rotation? So we have to look at this progressively. And, and it's, it's not that, that terribly complex if you look at how the musculature is oriented and what can limit hip rotation um, wherever you're measuring it. And so let's just use the typical common hip internal external rotation at, at 90 degrees of hip flexion. And, and so if we, if we break out the pelvis, and if we think about, let's assume we're in this, this nice relative you know, 90 degree position, what can actually limit internal and external rotation? And so the cool thing about some of this anatomy is that we got this really cool line that goes right across the back of the pelvis, right at the top of the trochanter. And so if you look at all the musculature that is below this line, as you, as you flex the hip, this musculature maintains its external rotation capabilities. And so that's the, the uh, anatomy that's going to be the primary limiter of that external rotation. What we need to consider after that is what type of a superficial strategy. So we're talking about the superficial musculature and, and how does that influence the position of the the sacrum relative to the to the ilium and then how does that impact the orientation of the acetabulum and so if i let's just say that that i have a a, a wide infrasternal angle presentation in somebody that does not have full breathing excursion so that means i'm going to have this this wide ipa orientation and i'm going to have a nutated sacrum the, the musculature below this level of the trochanter um, may have an element of, of external rotation, concentric orientation, but in general, that's going to happen later in the compensatory strategy sequence, if there is such a sequence. I think that happens simultaneously, but from a learning standpoint, we can look at this sequentially. So if I have a nutated sacrum, I would, I would have this uh, presentation where I would have uh, excessive internal rotation or more internal rotation than it would have external rotation initially until I get an anterior compressive strategy here. So think about your, your adductors that attach along the uh, pubic symphysis being the compressors on the front side that would create an orientation of the ilium that would, would increase the external rotation compensatory uh, uh, concentric orientation on the posterior side of the hip, and that would drive your, your uh, external rotation and lose the internal rotation. But again, that's, that's one of those compensatory strategies that's going to happen after the initial orientation of, of simply being a wide, uh, wide ISA, wide IPA at the pelvis. And if we look at it, a narrow, on the other hand, so we have, a, we have somebody that's gonna narrow this, this uh, IPA, they don't have full excursion of breathing, then what we're going to see earlier is we're going to see a, a, a much stronger compressive strategy here. So we're going to see more concentric orientation across this line. And so right away, you're going to have a presentation of increased external rotation and a reduction in internal rotation. And so again, we can get what looks like the same presentation from our measures, it's just going to be that the strategies will arise in a little bit of a different sequence. So again, it happens early in your narrow IP, uh, uh, yeah, narrow IPAs that don't have full breathing excursion. It's gonna happen later in your wider IPAs 
And, and so again, the thing I want you to recognize is whether you got a narrow or wide lane on the table, you can get the same, the same measures. They're just gonna happen at different times. So hopefully that helps a little bit in regard to, to acquiring that, that uh, more ER than IR kind of a presentation, even with the, the, the anterior compressive strategy, because again, that, that wide, that's what's gonna happen on the wide. As soon as I get that, um, I'm gonna start to lose the internal rotation that I should have as a wide. If we, if we look at uh, the orientation, so the orientation is the entire pelvis orienting forward. As soon as I start to gain orientation, that's where you're gonna start to take this ER that you, that you have that appears to be full or enough or excessive, and you're gonna start to lose it. So those are orientation issues. And so the first thing you need to do uh, when you're trying to uh, restore hip range of motion is, is again, recapture the ability to reduce the, the anterior orientation. So again, if we do this a quickie, quickie review, I got this line that goes across here. Anything below that line is gonna maintain its external rotation uh, capabilities through this 90 degrees of hip flexion. So that's where you're gonna have to start from a strategy standpoint. Um, on a wide, it's gonna happen later, which means you got some compressive strategies um, in, in the, the sacral area. You've got some compression strategies anterior that you're gonna have to address. And then um, if you have any questions about this, please throw them up. Because what we can do then is we could probably look at this from a, a segmental strategy standpoint. And those would make good videos probably is to just look at those and say, okay, well, what exercises can we actually utilize to address each of these elements? So, so as I measure presentations, what would be a good strategy to alleviate these issues and restore full hip motion capabilities? So happy Friday. Go kill your neuro coffee. Have a great time. Um, post your questions for, for next week's Q&As um, starting today here on the, the Instagram or, or on YouTube. Um, or uh, contact me directly at askbillhartman at gmail.com. Askbillhartman at gmail.com. Have a great weekend. I will see you guys later.